In this video, we're going to compare Raspberry Pis to virtual machines when it comes to your home lab. Welcome to Security Sec. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like this video if it's helpful at all. Comment down below with where you're at, whether you're wanting to go with a Raspberry Pi or a virtual machine or, you know, if you have any questions about that and subscribe for more content. I'll be posting every week. Now, first off, home labs are awesome. If you haven't already, watch the video that's linked at the very end of this video. It's gonna show you exactly how to set up a home lab. Now, why are home labs awesome without having to go and watch that other video you might ask? Well, they allow for a great safe space for you to be able to test out different things, test applications and theories and concepts in a testing environment. The one caveat though, is that the cost varies greatly. You could get fairly affordable Raspberry Pis, which generally go for $40, to much more expensive gaming computers to build up a pretty robust virtual environment or a combination of both. On one end, you have the cheaper Raspberry Pi, and on the other end, you have the very expensive gaming computer. And that's kind of what we're gonna compare here is what's better for your home lab and what will be more effective for you long-term. Now, a thing to acknowledge with Raspberry Pi is that though they may be cheaper, they're pretty bare bones with hardware. So you will be able to get some good testing in but you will not be able to do more resource intensive tasks. A virtual environment, however, is scalable, it's portable, it's deployable. You can do anything you want with it. You can download virtual machines off the internet that other people are messing with. You can automate the deployment of virtual machines. There is so much you can do with a virtual machine. However, to get a solid virtual lab, you probably have to buy a computer that has some beef on it. However, in order to do that, you're probably gonna have to buy a computer that has some beef on it. So today we're gonna compare both options. So, Raspberry Pis, the pro, they're cheap. They go for $40. There's a link down in the description where you can see for yourself and buy a Raspberry Pi if you're interested. They're portable. You can literally hold them in the palm of your hand. You can put them in your backpack if you wanna go war driving or take them somewhere. You can do all kinds of things with a Raspberry Pi. You can stick them in the back of your desk if you want to. They're small. Again, th that kind of fits with the portability. You can do whatever you want. You can put them wherever you want. You can flash any operating system onto it. And that's pretty nice. You can, if you want to test with Linux, you can test with Linux. If you want to test with a Windows Raspberry Pi, you can get a Windows Raspberry Pi. Same with Mac. You can do whatever you want to do with the Raspberry Pi. They're also pretty functional. Again, you can't do resource and intensive tasks, but the more routine automated tasks you want to do, if you want to practice Python or any other coding language, uh, if you want to test cron jobs, you can do all kinds of things with a Raspberry Pi. The cons. There are limited resources for resource intensive tasks. We talked about password security in a previous video, and if you wanted to test your passwords using John, you can't really do that in a Raspberry Pi. They do not have any native built IO devices, which is to say they do not have any input output devices. If you need a monitor, you're gonna have to get a monitor. If you need a keyboard or a mouse or a Wi-Fi dongle, you're gonna have to find those things on the internet. Now, if you do want those things, there's a link down in the description and you could get a pretty good home lab set up using the list of items that I've listed in the description. Now let's talk about virtual labs, which in this case, we're gonna talk about a gaming computer. Now you can get either a desktop or a laptop, it, it really doesn't matter if you wanna uh, take your laptop with you somewhere and, and maybe troubleshoot different problems with somebody, you can do that. If you wanna keep it a desktop, you can do that too. It, it's really up to you. I do wanna say, however, that with a desktop, with a tower, it's more modular. It's easier to upgrade certain elements of the machine. If you want a new GPU, you can get a new GPU. Whereas with the a laptop, it's a little bit more difficult to do that. Just wanted to detail that before you go and spend a lot of money on a gaming computer to build a virtual app. Make sure you're planning ahead especially with these kinds of big purchases. Now the pros of having a virtual lab, well, it's scalable. You can have as many virtual machines as you'd like. It really is dependent on the resources available on your computer. If you have 32 gigabytes of RAM, you can have 16 virtual machines and allocate two gigs of RAM for every virtual machine. That's a lot of machines. <laughs> They're deployable. If you mess around a lot with a virtual machine and you decide, you know, this might be good for a production environment or I wanna test this out in the real world, you can deploy it. 
Virtual machines are also used in just about every enterprise environment. Virtual machines can use any operating systems, just like a Raspberry Pi. However, it's a bit easier. Instead of having to flash it to an SD card, you just download the image. They can also have plenty of hardware for resource intensive tasks. You can manage how much memory is allocated and it pulls from the memory of the hypervisor. If it requires a much more resource intensive task like password cracking, you can just use the hypervisor. Whereas with the Raspberry Pi, you're relegated to just the Raspberry Pi itself. It's also flexible to use in professional environments. If you're wanting to get into penetration testing, now you have a pen testing computer. In addition to having a virtual lab, you also have a really big computer, which you can use for all kinds of other things. I mean, it's a gaming computer, so uh, games, anybody? Now the cons for a gaming computer. They are expensive. You can't just drop in and buy a random gaming computer. And if you can, I'm jealous, but really they are very expensive. Now they do vary in price. I've included links in the description of two different kinds of gaming computers. And if neither of those kind of fit what you're after, feel free to browse some more and find something that looks a bit better for you. Now make sure that you're planning ahead with getting a gaming computer if you're gonna get one to get a virtual lab. You wanna make sure that it's something that you can use years down the line, that you can stretch that dollar as long as you possibly can. Now I do wanna say that this decision depends very heavily on your goals. If your goal is to learn an operating system, to learn how to code, to learn how to do basic level tasks in a testing environment, the Raspberry Pi is probably the way for you. If that's the case, check the links down below and get your environment set up. That'd be awesome. However, if your objective is to learn how to deploy a large and diverse virtual environment to manage those machines from the hypervisor, to network them, to create active directories, to create a domain for yourself, the gaming computer is probably for you. And if you don't want to choose and you're in a you're in a position to get both, and I mean, hey, why not get both? And if you don't want to get both, just get one. <laughs> Start with the Raspberry Pis. And if you later decide that that wasn't the way to go, maybe you want to do something more. Well, now you have a pretty cheap Raspberry Pi and you can save up for a gaming computer later. And now you have both. Here's what I recommend for you. Stick to your goals. Do not impulse buy. I know that this can be an exciting time. Make sure that you're staying focused on your goals. You're not impulse buying. Here's what I don't recommend. Spending all of your money on a gaming computer and then not eating ever again. That's just bad money. I mean, I'm not an accountant, but that seems like a bad decision. So with all that being said, like if this video was helpful, comment down below with your thoughts. Are you gonna go with the Raspberry Pi or a gaming computer? And if so, do you have any recommendations for anybody else that's searching? Subscribe to this video. There's more content coming out every single week. Thank you very much for watching.